Thank God this trilogy's over. Let's review Venom the Last Dance. Venom the Last Dance stars Tom Hardy, Juno Temple, and is directed by Kelly Marshall. What's up guys? Welcome to a brand new 2024 review. I wasn't even sure if I was going to make the time to review this one since I did my out of theater reaction, but you know what? I told you guys that I would give you the review, so I'll review it. Uh, it'll probably be a little short, but that doesn't matter. But this has just been a strange trilogy. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will say it's interesting that it this franchise, this trilogy, doesn't really seem like it wants to intermingle with um, other Sony properties or uh, the MCU, even though, what was that, um, No Way Home? There was like a little cameo at the end with Venom. So this movie opens up with that. And it really amounts to nothing. He just he pretty much leaves that area, you know, and uh, comes back to his own uh, universe, you know. So he leaves that multiverse, right? And so that whole scene was pretty much pointless. And if that's a spoiler to you, then I'm sorry, okay? Um, but it's the beginning of the movie, and uh, I, I, I won't tell you if Spider-Man comes in the movie, okay? But to give you a quick plot synopsis, uh, you know, continuing the adventures of uh, Eddie Brock in this movie, he's actually, it's kind of a road trip movie because he spends a good amount of time um, getting to Las Vegas, and then there's kind of a big showdown in Las Vegas. But his goal, his real goal in the movie is to get to New York. But we don't really see New York that much at all in this movie. It's mostly... Uh, ending up on Area 51, whereas Area 51 has been shut down. And uh, there's this family led by I Rise Eye fans. You know, mother, father, and their two children. And they're they're wanting to go to Area 51 and break into Area 51. And I'm like, that's what you're going to do on vacation? You're going to actually put your own children at risk and you're going to break into Area 51? Kind of strange. By the way, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Rise Eye fans the lizard? Yeah, I just looked it up. He is. Rise Eye Fans. He plays the lizard. So why not go ahead and confuse the audience too since we're dealing with multiverses. And so is the lizard um, a, a different character in this particular verse? I, it's so stupid. Why even, like, why do we have to give the same uh, actors all these different roles in comic book movies uh, when there are so many hardworking actors out there? And this was kind of a throwaway role anyway, so... I don't know why you would give Rise Eye fans that role. Did I say his name right? Look guys, I think the first Venom movie, there's some fun to be had for sure. I hate the second movie. I just gave both those movies a, a fresh watch recently. And um, I will admit, I have never read the comics and, and you might use that as ammo against me, but I know what's a good movie and I know when I'm not annoyed by a movie, and I like comic book movies, I like tons of comic book movies, and I've never really read any comics, but these movies are horrible, and it's a shame because the character, Venom, uh, you know, I, I love the character, just visually, uh, what his powers are. I like him as a villain, a full-blown villain, but uh, I, I did read that he is more of an anti-hero in the comics, so I guess I'm wrong on that, but that doesn't make the movie good. This movie is just kind of all over the place, uh, plot-wise. I think it tries to explore certain things, but it doesn't really stay on them. Juno Temple plays this character, Dr. Payne, and they're in this like experimental laboratory. And without spoiling anything, I'll just say there's a lot of uh, symbiote action in this movie. They definitely noodle around with the idea of, I guess, her having these powers. She had this brother and they had this bond with each other and she was struck by lightning. And then we don't really explore her powers at all throughout the rest of the movie uh, until the final act when something happens, which I'm not going to spoil. But it's kind of, I guess, just for that one little moment. And I think she was probably the most interesting character to me in the entire movie. But we don't explore her enough at all. The always exceptional Chiwetel Ejiofor 
is here and he plays like a military leader type guy he's a general honestly i couldn't get a vibe to are they trying to make him the villain of the movie but then sometimes oh no he's not the villain of the movie so i had some questions about that character and i think he's a great actor he did the best he could with the character doesn't age by the way either aside from all that buffoonery i think the biggest thing that annoys me about this is i don't like Venom's voice, I don't like the, I guess the the relationship between Venom and Eddie in this movie is kind of weird to me. Yeah, there are some fun moments here and there throughout, but I find his voice kind of annoying, if I'm being honest. And, and you know, that's a, a that's a, a personal thing for me. Some of you might love his voice. I find it like grating, like, like nails on a chalkboard. I think there is some charm to their relationship with each other and I think there is a nice moment in the movie which I won't spoil. There's a definite connection even though Tom Hardy plays you know both voices. After it's all said and done, after all three movies have wrapped up, you ask yourself what was the point of all this? You know aside from I guess entertainment. You know it, I guess it fits right in with a, a Sony comic book movie. But to me, it's a shame because Venom's such a, a, an irresistible character to put in a world with Spider-Man. And why we didn't try to do that in this movie, uh, you know, I guess in this whole like trilogy in this universe, pointless. I like I, when when Sony just focuses on villains, they fail. They fail royally, and uh, I I don't know. I just don't know. Is this Madam Web bad? I think it's just a hair better than Madam Web, but it's really bad. Really, really bad. And I, I honestly feel like Tom Hardy's kind of tired of the character. And I don't even think Venom's in the movie enough. I think they spend more time with Eddie Brock and this ridiculous, stupid family that he comes upon. And there's like one scene in the, uh, the, the Jeep when they're driving. And the scene, I don't know if it's trying to be like artistic because the scene just kind of lingers for way too long. And I'm just like, what are we doing? What are we doing? So it sounds like I'm beating the shit out of this movie, and I guess I am. Uh, but th yeah, this was just horrible. And uh, the only good thing is I'm glad the trilogy's over, which is a shame because the character Venom is really cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely giving this a two hours lost. Some of you will find some enjoyment. It shocks me that some people said this is the best of the trilogy. I think that's an impossibility, even though it's an opinion type thing. That, that, that's got to be a fact. That, that there's, there's no way this movie could be the best of the trilogy, okay? So that's my glowing review of uh, Venom The Last Dance. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums and on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And Drum Dum out.